Hi, everyone. I'm Terry Crosby in Care of Relationships. I do life and relationship coaching, and I often say that I help people who love each other get along. All right. Today is a unique show. It is about what we're committed to. It's about what people say they're committed to in partnerships. And I believe this is a really unique opportunity to hear from four people, different ages, different circumstances, different belief systems, and hear them talk about what's important to them about their participation in their relationship. And so I've put together a montage of their answers. The four basic questions that I ask them are as follows. Number one, what are you committed to in your partnership? And this question is important because it has to do not with our partner, not with what we're hoping <laughs> to bring out of our partner or the relationship that we're hoping to create. It doesn't have to do with that. It has to do with what we are bringing to the partnership. What qualities are we committed to um, uh, creating or generating in the partnership? Who are we committed to being? That sort of thing. So it's not about what you're looking for in your partner, what who you're hoping that they are, who you're hoping they will be for you. It's not about any of that. It's about us and specifically what are we committed to bring into the partnership? So that's the first question. The second question is when things are going really well, what does that do for you? And also what does that do for your partner? The third question is the opposite of that. When things are not going well, what does that, what, um, let's say that you're stressed for some reason, maybe something happened inside the relationship there's an argument or a disagreement maybe something happened outside the relationship like life made things difficult and um maybe it could be a death or illness or job loss or financial worries that sort of thing so when things are tough how does that change your commitment what do you notice about it so that's that's the third question and the fourth question is, what would you tell your younger self? Uh, given what you know now, what do you wish you had known <laughs> when you were starting out in this relationship or partnership? And pardon me. <coughs> so every person answers differently. I love the variety and I hope you will too. The variety of answers and insights and observations, um, I really appreciate their wisdom. So this is going to be part one of what are you committed to in your partnership? Look for part two coming up in the future. I don't know the exact date yet. So just keep your eye open for that. And as always, I, I always say, it, um, Please take very good care of yourself. Thank you for sharing this episode with anyone that might find it useful. And here we go. Here are the answers from four different people about what are you committed to in your partnership. Enjoy. What I'm committed to in my relationship at this moment in time is staying present. Uh, my husband has Parkinson's. It's, he's about 15 years into Parkinson's and it's changed the dynamics of the relationship greatly. So there were small things that used to niggle me early on in our relationship that I always thought could change or be better. And it's become very apparent with the Parkinson's that that is not gonna change for the better. It's only gonna get worse. And so I'm really committed to staying present with him in the relationship, taking care of what needs he has, places where his mind doesn't work or his body doesn't work, and I have to fill in the slack. What it means to be staying present is number one, not to run away and go hide. And number two, it's very challenging because if I'm really being present, not just for him, 
but present for me. Those are two different scenarios. Um, so I think that my being present means uh, it challenges me to be really in the present moment um, and responding in the present moment, not with my preconceived idea about what should be happening, but actually stay in the present moment and recognize that he doesn't recognize how he's affecting me. So I have to learn how to really stay in my center. And it's it's actually quite challenging. When um, I'm feeling stressed about getting things done or there's some other stress about scheduling, um, trying to keep my commitment is more challenging. And what tends to happen is I get angry. <laughs> I get angry and it's like, sit, stay, let me do that. <laughs> I can do it faster than you. I, I can do it efficiently. Now, just let me do it. Yeah. So it's kind of an anger that arises in, in those kind of situations that makes it somewhat challenging. So I imagine every caregiver out there, anyone who's who loves their husband, who appreciates, you know, all that they brought to the relationship. I've been married 42 years. Gary brought a lot to the relationship as a young woman. He was my um, he was my rock. I could always rely on him to be there for me and to be steady and constant and um, and have a solid opinion that I could just rest in. And at this moment in time, and so I love him for that. I love him for everything that he brought to the relationship. And now um, he's not the rock anymore. I'm having to be more of the rock. And... Um, you know, so so that is its own, uh, uh, it is a caregiving role. And even though there's some places he shines through as the adult, a lot of the day-to-day -day function or, mm, can I help you with that? Do you need help on the computer? Things like that that put him in his mind into confusion. It's a little bit like handling a, a teenager. I have to go carefully and handle it but boy it's hard to stay in the room all the time you know sometimes I just feel the pressure of just having to get out having to be with friends having to do something different where I can feel myself in a neutral way and I can be my complete self what I relied on what what I wished I had known what I wished my inner child had known 42 years ago when I started out with Gary. I wish she had known that she was safe, that she was loved, and she was appreciated no matter what she did. Wow. So early, early in the relationship, I didn't know I was safe, so I relied on him to be my safety. And later on, that sort of you know, I grew a lot over the years. I did evolve. My inner child did evolve. There was an evolutionary process. But I would still say that that little inner part of me, when I get off center and don't quite know how to respond or I'm frustrated or feeling a little bit stressed, the reminder that always brings me back is to say to myself, you're safe you're loved, and you're appreciated. And that really helps me to come back, come back down to a good place. Partnership, I am committed to being self-expressed and authentic. Um, I am committed to keeping my voice. I am committed to curiosity. Um, I am committed to supporting my partner in their journey, even if it's different than mine. Um, I am committed to being loveful, loving and not fearful. When we act from fear, the worst of us comes out. And I think we end up burning our relationships to the ground as a result. So I am committed to doing it differently in my partnerships moving forward. 
when I am committed to these things and executing them, um, it gives me freedom. It gives me individuality. It gives me power. I guess it maybe goes back to the freedom part of it, but um, I feel like I'm in my relationship out of choice and not obligation. And therefore I don't feel suffocated. I feel like I can grow. I feel like I can expand. Um, yeah, I feel like I'm soaring. I feel free and expressed and able to give love, you know, able to really share the best parts of me because I have the freedom to do it. Interesting because when I was thinking about that question of how you show up and how you maintain your commitments in adversity in your partnership, I feel like that's when we're at our strongest. You know, looking back historically, that it's the day to day stuff that it's easier to fall out of commitment um, in, in what I want to bring to the partnership. But when there are, you know, the bigger struggles in life, death, um, illness, things like that, that actually, for me, I feel like I step more into my true self and my true way of honoring our partnership and supporting and loving. I am able to stand in my highest way of being in partnership that I believe for my partner, it allows them to do the same. For example, I believe we're all reflections of each other. And so if I'm standing in a place of freedom and self-expression and safety, you know, the, the saying or whatever to be, um, to be free. What is it? I wrote it down. I'm going to look at it. Um, to be both held and free when you are at a place where you feel like you're both held and free, that they are in that frequency as well, because it's being offered, it's being cultivated between you. And so they're able to be their most authentic express Selves. I wish that I would have known at the start of this relationship a whole lot of things that would take a lot of time to unpack. Um, I haven't had time to think on this, so um, take your time. This is emotional for me. You want it authentic. So um, part of me feels like I would tell her not to do it. But I also know that that's because I'm in the middle of the pain around it and can't fully see the beauty yet, but I know it's there. And I know that it's bigger than not having done it if that makes sense. Um, it's been the most challenging work that I've done in this life, um, but I know it will be the most rewarding and I'm almost at the place to stand in that. I'm just not quite there yet. So I think I would say, even when it's hard, keep your heart open, be more loving, and compassionate. Learned 20 years ago that we are all one and we are all doing the best we can, but also stand strong in your boundaries and don't lose your voice. The biggest thing that I have learned in the last 18 years of partnership, I have to narrow it down to one. <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't. Give me a laundry list. Oh, okay. I can actually give you number one, or we can do a laundry list. We can go one of two ways, but number one would be two things. Um, you can't save somebody else. And being in partnership with intimacy is really interesting. I've learned because as tightly connected as you are, both within intimacy, but also in day-to-day -day life, remembering that they have their own journey that in many ways is none of your business. So, or, or at least not yours to control. Maybe that's what it is, not yours to control. Um, and learning what that boundary is, you know, within that interwovenness, 
you know, letting them maintain their individuality and um, walk whatever path that is theirs to walk, you know, and, and be there in that parallel line. That's probably the biggest thing that I have learned that I wish I would have known 18 years ago starting out. <laughs> yeah. And what about the laundry list? Just, just throw out whatever, if oh. you like it. Don't take things so personally. My laundry list of what I would, what I've learned in the last 18 years of partnership is I don't take things so personally. Um, oh, that's such a big one. You can always be loving if you choose to come from that place. Take space before you respond. You know, really insist on, on taking space. Um, don't lie. You know, not the big things, not cheating, not those kind of things, but I'm talking about just being really honest in every moment about how you're feeling because you don't realize how quickly that slips away and you don't know how to do it anymore. You know, it starts with those little day-to-day -day things. Um, is everything okay? Yeah, it's fine. You know, those things. And it seems really minute, but it piles up and it becomes this huge thing between you. I've learned a whole lot about how I would do it next time. <laughs> What I'm committed to in my relationship is, uh, first of all, staying. We've been married almost 43 years, so I guess I'm here. <laughs> and I think part of that ability to stay in the relationship is um, good communication. And also um, other qualities are just um, being open to change or not change. Because what we do in our relationships is you cannot change somebody. When things are challenging, it's um, the commitment is still there. The reaction to the um, situation may elicit things that don't necessarily align with the commitment. Um, part of what makes us a, a good fit in our relationship is the fact that we're very different um, and that is one of the most challenging things in that he is, um, my, my partner is more of an A to B to C person going along each of the little uh, obstacles until that one's resolved and then moving to the next step. And I'm more of an A to Z person. I, I can see where we're going and I figure we'll figure it out and get there somehow. And when we have when we have challenges, it's typically um, not being on the same step at the same time, and that creates a lot of um, interesting situations. And for me, I tend to just shut down. So I think when we have a relationship, we're looking at not just our own relationship, but what we've been handed down from our parents. And so one of the things to do is always look at what the family dynamics are when you're looking at getting into a relationship. But, but when you're in a challenging situation, the, um, the, my tendency is to just shut down and back off and not communicate, which is one of the things that I'm committed to. So that becomes a challenge. And fortunately, my partner, one, of, one or the other of us, has always in big situations uh, in our relationship have always come back and said, okay, let's talk about it. And and when we've talked about it, it's always worked out. And that's probably the biggest challenge is making sure that those lines of communication are open. Um, and not, for me, again, the challenge is not withdrawing. It's very difficult for me to say to, to tell a younger self something because it is uh, often a lifetime that you are going through and learning these things and if you don't go through the process that learning process 
you don't know what you know now in the same context. So I'm not sure that there's anything that you can tell a younger person that they will really understand. I, I think that for me, it's not so much the partnership uh, relationship that I would have told myself about. Because when I was younger, I didn't know who I was or what I wanted or what was important to me. So what I would tell my younger self is make sure that you really explore all that you have to offer and your what you really want. Um, because that will change the kind of relationship that you have. What am I committed to in my partnership? I think one of the things that I'm committed to is happiness. Of course, I want a well-rounded relationship based on love and happiness. We both and to me, that is a two-way street. I mean, it's 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 a come and go, not come and go, so to speak, but it's both of us have to be able to give in that per partnership in order to receive those things in the partnership. Sharing that responsibility, so to speak, um, is key for both partners, for he and I both to be happy in the relationship. What I try to do <clears throat> and my partner, not so much. Is, but what I try to do is just step back and take a deep breath and remember that this is just a bump in the road, so to speak, and that we can get through this, but we have to do it together. And I try to make sure that he knows that, because if he knows that I'm taking that step back, then he's willing to take a step back and look at it a different way as well. And I think that's what's key is, you know, sometimes I feel like I have to put in more of the mm, work, so to speak, not work, because it really isn't work, but I have to put in more of what needs to be done. But once I do, I feel like he also is able to step back and look and see what's being done. And then he wants to reciprocate. I am the initiator, but I feel like once I initiate something, then it comes back to me. You know, um, when he sees that I've initiated something and I'm trying to accomplish something in our relationship, then he in turn looks at that and tries to reciprocate. That's nice. What do yeah. you wish you what do you wish you would have known so many years ago when you started out? I know this is not your first partnership. No. What do you what do you what would you turn around and tell yourself? Yeah. One of the things I would not have gotten married so young. I would have waited, you know, because I did get married so very young, I would have waited. Um, but another thing that I would have told I would tell myself is to slow down <laughs> and not to take everything at face value. You know, so when somebody says something to you, take it in and mull it over versus going with your very first response. I mean, and I know that I've done that before in relationships. Um, you know, when something that I don't agree with or something, I just bounce on it. And so one of the things that... <laughs> I would tell myself now is to stop, slow down, take a deep breath, look at the whole situation, not just that one little piece of the situation and go from there. I think if I'd have done that, that relationship would have been better. I mean, we had a good relationship, even though he passed away, but um, yeah, it would have been a better relationship. And I think that's why this relationship has been so good so far is because I have learned to slow down, take that deep breath and look at the whole picture. Nice. Do you think you would have heard your advice, you know, as Probably a young not. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> but it was worth a shot. It would be worth a shot. It would yeah. be worth a shot. It would yeah. be worth a shot. I, I was in a completely different place then than I am now. So yeah, I doubt if I'd have listened. <laughs> I think when we form relationships as we get older, 
Um, those relationships, I, I can't say that they're any better or any worse, um, but they have more meaning. They have more sus, sus, substance, it seems like. Um, and if you base that relationship on love and both of you are reciprocating that feeling towards each other, I feel like you could work anything out. Um, you know, the partner that I have now, we've been together almost five years now. I can't believe that. And it's been a good relationship. It's been a great relationship, even though we've had our times. There are times and everybody has those. But I think the I think the key is knowing how much we love each other and how much we want to work the relationship out and then stepping back, you know, taking that deep breath and making it work. Yeah. And that's the advice that I would give anybody. I mean, I give them, I give advice all the time to my grandkids. And that's what I tell them to slow down, take a look, be treat, treat people the way you want to be treated. And in a committed relationship, you know, I think you have to give in order to receive.